on display, how many of these are, are ready? Uh, obviously, the, the one that we just saw, you know, you explained on WiiWare. Are there any other titles uh, poised to get big distribution? Um, I think Snapshot's going to get a pretty big distribution. It's still a prototype, but I know a lot of publishers are interested in it. You know, a lot of these games, the people aren't even interested in that deal. Like, Fly Ranch is free. You can download it right now for free on his site. Um, and, you know, he's not really looking for a deal, so... It's interesting to see that. You know, some people are definitely interested in like getting the studio going, getting the publishing deals, and some people are just happy to make cool games and put them out there for people to play. Cool, man. Adam, thanks for joining us once again. Indiecade, here we are, man. Independent games. This is, uh, this is definitely something that folks need to keep a pulse on because a lot of cool content comes out of here, right, Adam? That's right. Thanks a lot, Homer. All right, so I'm signing out from the Indiecade booth. GameSpot's coverage of E3 2009 continues. Thank you, Homer Ibarra. We are now joined on stage by a trio of EA experts. I've got Brian Hayes, who is, of course, the man that is uh, working on Fight Night Round 4. I guess all of you guys in, in, all, in one form or another are. I'll start down from the end. We've got Mike Mahar, who is the legacy mode and online producer. In the middle, we've got Dean Richards, who is the senior producer. And as I said, Brian Hayes, you are the gameplay producer. That's correct. All important people uh, for a very important product. Of course, Fight Night Round 4. Anybody that knows me knows I'm a huge boxing fan. And uh, we've been waiting for this. I know you guys released the demo just the other day. How's the feedback been from the crowd playing the demo? Pretty, uh, pretty excited? The feedback has been good. Um, we heard the other day, actually, the, the numbers of downloads have been actually quite staggering, like yeah. much higher than I guess they expected. Cool. Uh, so, I mean, a lot of people are downloading it. A lot of people are playing it. The booth here at E3 has been just nonstop. Okay. I stopped playing just because I was just taking up spots for people that haven't played it before. So just let them go at it unless they want to challenge me and then it only takes a round or two to finish them off. So. But uh, no, feedback's been really good from the demo. Excellent. Now uh, let's go ahead and look at what you guys are playing right now because this is the matchup I think a lot of people are waiting for when well, they get a hold of the game. Definitely did one of the, the more popular ones over at the booth as well as Ali Tyson. Um, every once in a while we get a, a hardcore fan that wants to see some of the other champions, but this has definitely been really popular. We got, obviously we choose these guys a lot because it really shows off a lot of the things we've done in round four, and that's the physics system, inside-outside fighting, height and reach making a difference. Um, the fact that one clean punch can really change the outcome of a fight. So a guy like Mike Tyson, we've actually had some, uh, we did the, the EA press conference, and I wasn't supposed to knock Jeff out, Jeff at the ends of the line producer, uh, and I knocked him out, and it was totally, I was like, like I actually put my hand in my mouth, I was kind of shocked and scared, but, uh, you know, just because you never know, you get the right counter move going and you hit him with a big hook, somebody's going to go right down, so. It looks um, like you definitely got the, the little peekaboo style that he's like a little shook when he comes in. With yeah, the... and, that, and that's something that we, we had to do when we start first started sort of working with the physics system and we had the inside-outside. Once we made the guys the right height, well, Ali had this advantage of being able to hit you with the stick from a distance, and then we had to actually add in that weave mo motion on the left analog stick so you could move forward and move your head at the same time because the, the old way of doing it in round three was you had to plant your feet and that's the only way you could move your head so we had that little gesture on the left analog that lets you weave in underneath a jab or a straight right and then counter right away with the hook and it works really well a lot of the time if you time it just right nice. now now to let the folks at home know you are no uh rookie when it comes to fight now you've actually worked on on previous versions of the game correct yeah actually my my first gig as a as an assistant producer was on Fight Night 2004. Um, so I have a, a you know a bit of a history with the with the franchise. Um, it's one of my favorite games of all time, you know, and I'm, I'm really happy to be back for sure. Yeah, definitely. Is it hard, especially Fight Night Round 3, I think everybody would agree was a stellar, you know, fantastic game. Is it definitely hard to come in? Is it pretty intimidating to try to build on top of something like that? Or was it easy because it's already there and like you could see what you want to do? Well, we knew we had our work cut out for us because Number one, you know, and while they're in the instant replay right there and they're showing off some of the visuals, um, you know, one of our biggest concerns, I think, was Fight Night Round 3 was a game that people said, wow, this is what next gen looks like. The graphics blew everybody away. But it ran at 30 frames a second, so they, their performance budget was quite a bit higher. We knew that to get the, the speed and the responsiveness and the fluidity that we wanted, we had to run at 60. But at the same time, we wanted to take steps forward in the visuals. And that's like, the analogy I've said before, it's kind of like, you go to Ferrari and you say, that's a great Ferrari. Can you make one twice as fast that gets twice as good gas mileage? Like, what? And like, well, no, we just made one. It's awesome. Like, so, but that's what we had to do. And, you know, obviously 60 frames per second, it's smooth. And visually, 
the graphics, I mean, they're, if, if you don't mind me saying, no. they're really quite stunning, especially when you, the great thing about it is that the game really comes to life when you play it. It doesn't just make great screenshots, but when you're playing, the muscles are flexing in real time. All the facial deformation, uh, the sweat, the spit, and the blood that goes flying off their face is all driven by the physics engine, and it's different, it's dynamic every single time. So it really makes the fight you know, uh, an organic, evolving experience. It's really fun to watch, and it's great to play. Yeah, yeah I, I definitely uh, freaked out the first time I, I turned the demo on. I think, I think we, that was the funny thing. Check this out. You'll love this story. You'll be the only person that will, you, you guys would be the only people that appreciate this. We packed up Thursday night, right? Thursday night, is that, the, that was the night it came out, right? Yes. All right, so Thursday night we were packing up to come down to here. And so we packed up until like literally like 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning. It's dead bone tired. Just think about that. And we had to be back there at like, I think it was like 8 o'clock or 7 o'clock or something crazy. Yeah. So literally it was going to be like a two, two hour night worth of sleep. Been, been averaging that apparently for about a week and a half. The funny thing is I get home and I knew the demo came out, right? So here, the, the question I'm like asking myself as I'm driving home, I'm like, am I really, am I really going to download that thing and try it? Like, or am I going to go to bed? And sure enough, obviously, you know the answer, right? All right, I'm going to download it while I'm brushing my teeth and getting ready for bed. I was going to have one, try, one, one, one round. So, uh, so yeah, it's a definitely a, a very attractive game. And then, yeah, you're right. It's beautiful. The first time you see Pacquiao come on there, uh, it, you know, it, it, looks, it looks fantastic. So what about the, let's get into the actual new mechanics, because Haymaker, you changed it. Well, haymakers have changed. That's something where, you know, what we, we did do a lot of analysis of Fight Night Round 3 because, you know, to be perfectly honest, we were all huge fans of the game. We played it a lot when we were in, obviously, like, the concept and, and pre-production phases. We played Fight Night Round 3 a lot. And there's a lot of things where that was helpful because, like, just from our, like, just repeated playing and playing and playing, we were able to identify, well, what are the things that we wish were a little bit different? Um, and one thing I found just ergonomically was that the haymaker system on Round 3 was really easy for me to throw left haymakers, but right haymakers were really hard because just getting your thumb to go back and around and around right. was really tough. So it's almost like you knew if a guy's throwing a haymaker, it was gonna be left and you knew to block that way, et cetera. So we just decided to simplify it, make it more accessible, just put the haymaker modifier on a, on a shoulder button, and then you throw a hook or an uppercut, you add a little bit of steam to it, and it lets you vary your game up. You can throw left, right, uppercut, or hooks. So change the change the I guess the uh, impact, not necessarily in terms of the force, but literally just the, the amount of because uh, the haymaker was definitely a, a fight changer. Yes, but it's definitely. I mean, the other thing about it is that because the whole game itself runs much faster, it's much more responsive. You'll find that they're actually. It's not as easy to land haymakers in this game yeah. as it was in round three because your ability to get your head out of the way is, is much, better. much better. And that's really where the, there was a, wow, that was a perfect example of it on screen right there. Um, and it actually showed oh. a, another, uh, you know, the, the weave mechanic. Uh, Ali just weaved right under Tyson's hook and then rocked him right back. But yeah, the head movement is so much more responsive and the, the game is really about timing now as opposed to placement. You know, in, in round three, the parry system worked that if I just held my hand up here, I could have been holding it up here for 30 minutes, yep. but as soon as you throw a punch, I slapped it out of the air. Whereas in real life boxing, if I was holding my hand here, well, you're just gonna punch around it or just hit me on this side, whatever. Right. So in our game, it's really always about timing. The punches retarget your head wherever it's at if it's there for long enough. So as opposed to when I crouch down and you just sail hooks or jabs over my head all the time, well, you'll just punch me in the head when I'm down there. So the thing that I do a lot in the game is I love getting in there and I stick my chin out at a guy, like I lean forward, I'm like, you know, I'm right here, I'm right here, I'm baiting him. And then as soon as he throws a hook, I know I can pull back and then I can come right back with something of my own. Um, and again, it's all about timing, it's really rewarding, um, and it's just fluid and dynamic, it's great. That's fantastic. Now, uh, we've, been talking, we've been talking quite a bit about the mechanics. Uh, anything else that you guys have changed that people are gonna find for the first time when they turn it on? It's coming out, what, June 28th? It has been moved up to June 23rd, I believe, 23rd. yeah. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, what are people gonna find when they turn this on and fire it up? You got a career mode, you got online, you got... Oh yeah, I mean, uh, our career mode is actually something we've called legacy mode. So you may have heard a bit about that, but you know, that was one of the, some of the feedback from round three was that the, the single player mode was a little bit shallow. So we really wanted to focus on getting the meat and potatoes of a boxing career mode in there. So you can expect to see, number one, you can fight in one of the original eight weight divisions from flyweight to heavyweight. Um, you can import created fighters into your career mode. There's multiple titles in each division. You can move up in weight class and win more titles. And all of those sort of achievements and moving up the ladder and becoming a champion, that feeds into what we call the legacy meter. Um, so your, your record, your pop, your popularity. <laughs> Is that our game? That doesn't sound like, no. Uh, your popularity, your pound for pound status, all that feeds into what you're ranking on the legacy meter. So you started as a prospect, you can become a club fighter, a contender, a champion. 
and then it really takes that extra bit of you know effort and sort of desire to get, become a legend of the ring or a Hall of Famer or possibly the greatest of all time. Um, so as opposed to just winning the title and then deciding when you want to retire, there's actually something to go for, which is like, can you match the resume of guys like Sugar Ray Robinson or Muhammad Ali and become the greatest of all time? Um, and it's one of those things where we think it might add replayability because the first time you do it, you might only be get to become a Hall of Famer. Right. And you'll see where, you know what, if I had fought this guy or if I had won this title, if I had done this or done that, I could have taken a step forward. And then you try it again and see if you can get it done. Uh, we, before we run out of time, do you mind if I throw some questions at you from the audience? Yeah, sure. All right, let's see what we got here. I've got uh, Abraham out of Port Chester. He is already asking about any downloadable content plans. Uh, we definitely, we announced in the press conference there is going to be a dedicated uh, DLC team for Fight Night. So you can expect to see updates, you know, throughout the, the life of the project um, until we get to, you know, the next one. Um, so we don't have any announcements on fighters yet, but that is definitely something we will look at because it's, I mean, any ability we have to expand the roster, even though it's the biggest one that's ever been in Fight Night already, you know, we would love to do that. Perfect segue, Daniel Diaz at Guadalupe. He wants to know how many fighters are there in the game? Uh, 48 guys are in the game, which is, like I said, the biggest one of any Fight Night game. And, uh, you know, some great additions. And myself being a, a boxing fan, like, we have guys like Tommy Hearns and George Foreman who've never been in the game before and young up-and-comers like Victor Ortiz and Yuri Ocas Gamboa. So if you're a hardcore fan, those guys are in there too. So it's a great assortment of guys. The, uh, Michael Black, he wants to know the online stuff. Have you guys, is it, you know, does it run smooth? Is it, you know, better, worse than last time? That is definitely something that we know that head-to-head -head and fight night is like a big thing. So we wanted to make sure we tested that like crazy. Uh, and we have a, like a dedicated online testing team up at the studio in EA Canada. We actually test with people internationally against people in India and I tested uh, online against people from various you know media outlets every time I played it has not affected my game a bit and I am a, I'm a finesse player I'm a timing guy so um, it's pretty buttoned up um, and you know it's funny this is the T shavers out of Escondido California he wants to know uh, are there still training mini games uh, to upgrade your stats you guys still have in between yep. round stuff and Legacy mode has uh, there's six training games in total. Um, and there's a, a new assortment of them that you haven't seen before. Uh, we, we definitely try to focus on stuff that teaches you to play the game while you're doing a training game. So it's not like a, there's no, you don't do a dance dance revolution type mechanic. It's stuff that you use the actual controls, either moving your head, moving your feet, or moving your fists. Um, I've got a few folks asking about specific fighters, but I'm sure there's somewhere they can go look online that has the whole roster, correct? I'm pretty sure, yeah. If you, if you check online the boards, the, pretty much the whole roster's out there somewhere. People have uh, put it together. Uh, Trevor Charles in Michigan wants to know the uh, the control system on the old game. It used to be so that you could have it both on the sticks and then also on the buttons. Same thing again or no? Uh, no, the the final version of the game we went strictly with the sticks, right? And the reason and we've been getting a lot of feedback like that. Uh, the reason we did that is that we're we're taking it over, we're building it from the ground up, and we really wanted to focus on tuning the game, polishing the game the best we could with the one control scheme that we think provides the best experience. Um, that being said, there has been some feedback about buttons. Some people really wish they were there. And that, again, with DLC, that's something we might be able to address, but we don't know about that yet. Uh, Michael on Prague wants to know 1080p on both Xbox 360 and PS3? I believe so. Um, boxing, uh, I'm sorry, customized uh, boxer mode. You guys had to create a fighter, pretty, pretty awesome, robust system last time. Yeah, and... Well, obviously, the, I guess the big news for round four is photo game face. So you can take a picture with your USB camera or upload it to EA Sports World, pull it down, make your face, and then there's sliders there for, to adjust it and tweak it just perfectly. Um, and then also the gear and the customization of the gear, uh, you know, changing the color on your robe and the logo and the name and the trim on your trunks and the shoes and the gloves, all in there. It's a lot of fun. It's really deep. You can spend a lot of time in there customizing your guy. Yeah, what about uh, Raymond Thorpe out of London has a very good question. What about those chumps? And I'm talking to all you chumps out there that do this. What about the people that disconnect mid-match? Like the people who are going to lose and they like, oh. Oh, we, we, yeah, we, there's always rules in there. We're getting better and better at finding like the, the ways that people, you know, try to escape and, and not put an L on their record. So that stuff is taken care of. We have policies in place that if somebody griefs and, and pulls a cable and all sorts of stuff, you don't get a loss, and it doesn't affect all that sort of stuff yet. Isn't that weird thing? Like on the last one, I remember, like it was weird because like the creative fighters, if I remember right, were like way overbalanced compared to the other guys, if I remember right, right? Is that, did you guys fix that? Or? Well, when you create a, a boxer in the front end to use online, you can only use him in ranked and unranked head-to-head -head matches. The one thing we have different for online this year, and it's a great segue, is the online world championships. 
and that is actually only for created boxers. And all the created boxers in that mode are leveled stats. So everybody's on a level playing field, and it's really skills are going to pay the bills. And online world champions are about moving up the rankings and winning a belt. And when you have that belt, just like in real life, if you were a champion, you need to defend it, or it's going to be taken away from you and go to somebody else. And when you're the champ, people are gunning for you. It's going to be online, like the whole world. So people that become a world champion online, that's going to be a big deal. We think it's going to be a real badge of, uh, you know, honor for people. Fantastic. Well, I'm going to let you sneak out of here. I can see the folks over here getting ready uh, for our next segment. Brian Hayes, pleasure as always. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Game looks fantastic. Fight Night Round 4 coming out the 23rd now of this month. Yep. Xbox 360, PlayStation 3. Correct. And uh, thank you guys, gentlemen, for, for demoing down there. Really appreciate it. Awesome fighting. And uh, right now we're going to move on with E3 2009 Day 3. Getting toward the end of the day. I think we got maybe one more live demo, maybe two more, depending on what we got. One more, just one more. And uh, it should be a good one. So definitely come back after this. Take it easy.